once again, welcome to the UTA. A lot of things going on, as, as all of you know, uh, in the wing. Uh, I asked uh, Sergeant Fry to get up and talk about the uh, active shooter exercises. Uh, my goal is to ensure that uh, the safety of the wing is always paramount. Uh, my goal is to protect all of you and uh, prepare you that if you're in some type of incident like that or something like that's going on in your workplace, whether it be in your civilian workplace or military workplace, that you know how to react, what to do. Uh, I've asked uh, Major Baker to uh, bring up the uh, sexual assault uh, coordination office quite a bit because it's very important to me that I, you understand that this is just another part of the services that we can provide you. Uh, and I talk about a part-time job for some of you, uh, but I want to give you full-time service. If there's an issue out there that you or your family are feeling, especially as we uh, start up with this, I call it plus a, not really a surge operation, but if there's an issue out there you need to talk about, whether it be here or your civilian job or your family life, talk to somebody. If it's not one of your co-workers, we have a full-time chaplain now, uh, Chaplain Nicholson. Uh, he comes to us, he's going to be a Title 10 ADR. He works full-time directly for me. Uh, I don't want him in the chaplain's office. We have a chaplain office uh, with uh, the wing chaplain, Paul Kalu, and his staff. But the full-time chaplain is going to be forward. I'm going to put him in the uh, 337th, uh, right next to the flight engineer office. So I'm not sure who's going to win out over there, the flight engineers or the chaplain. I'm, I'm betting on the chaplain. But uh, we're going to put him over there uh, so that he can get out. He can talk to all of you and uh, give me a little bit of a, a reading on what's really going on. It's very important that we remember as we get into critical days of summer and we move forward uh, and, and once you get past all the pollen and all the other things and the issues that we got. But uh, it's important to understand that we've already had, I think, uh, Michael, what, at least two motorcycle accidents in the last month. Uh, if weather's getting nice, you haven't been out there on your motorcycle uh, in quite a while. Just remember there's a lot of folks out there driving uh, that uh, I think speed limits and uh, a lot of rules on the road in the state of Massachusetts are advisory only. So be careful when you're out there uh, and keep your eyes open for the folks that are out there on a motorcycle. Uh, but always look at that and think about, okay, how does my safety, my ORAM, and things that we do here translate to you in your civilian life uh, with your family and everything you do. I think we have a, a great uh, uh, system here. I think we have great people doing great things. We just have a few people that may not be following checklists. And that's where I talk about every time of accountability. Ensure that if you're out there and somebody's breaking the rules, if somebody is not following the checklist, if you know that something's not right, I don't care if you have one stripe or you have all the stripes in the world like Chief Skosky, uh, it doesn't matter. One person can stop an accident from happen happening. And so keep that in mind, whether it be an airplane, whether you're out there at vehicle maintenance, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, hold the folks accountable. Uh, basically, uh, we're providing 35% of the C-5B airlift for the Air Mobility Command. That's really important to me. Uh, when General Johns passed through here several months ago, uh, he saw what the capability was, he saw the work ethic that you provide, and he understands how important uh, and strategic this base is to his operations. So that when the first thing he came up with, they found out the only airplane that could fly these MATVs that are being built down in Goose Creek, South Carolina, just north of Charleston, uh, was the C-5. Uh, the first unit he asked for was Westover. It's important that you understand uh, that how much the folks out there support what you're doing. It's very important that you understand that they are behind us all the way. Whether you see the USO folks out there, whether you see the Airman Family uh, Support Readiness Center that we have here right uh, in the same area as the chaplain, you've got the USO, all of them there are ready to help you. So if you haven't thought about it, if, you, if you're in whatever status you're in, I want to make sure you understand, we're here to support you. Family readiness is there to support you. They've got events happening this weekend. We've got the yellow ribbon. Anybody can attend these things and then get your families out there too. It's very important to me that, that you understand the, the capabilities that we have for you. Uh, let me tell you, there's a lot of folks that are out there, uh, and as we brought up orders, I just want to make sure you understand, there's some uh, judicial issues going out there. Uh, when you sign that travel voucher, make sure that uh, what you put down there, and I don't think we have a problem, it's uh, an issue of some other basis. And the issue is basically these folks are uh, certifying something they didn't do or certifying something that they were supposed to be doing. So keep that in mind, not only the person signing the travel voucher, but your, your supervision should understand what's going on. So don't get yourself in that, that situation. Uh, be upfront and then claim what you have to. Uh, we want you to get paid for what you do. 
but also be careful that, that if you're not sure what's going on or if you're not sure what you can claim, talk to somebody. Talk to your first shirt, talk to your supervisor, or go to FM and they'll give you an answer. I want to provide you services that you need. If you don't need them, tell me. Uh, if you need them or we're not providing those, let me know. Uh, I know Chief Skowski uh, and I have been working on the Wi-Fi program. Uh, and if uh, the interim fix because we can't seem to get uh, what we needed uh, and paid for by the command, I'm willing to get out there and put a bunch of uh, Wi-Fi hotspots out there. I know we're going to do the one by the USO building, uh, so that's going to be our first place. So even after hours, you can go out there. It's kind of unusual to see people sitting in their car on their computer, but that, that's, that's okay, even uh, on the back side of the clock. But uh, we want to provide those services. I, I really wanted to provide the Wi-Fi all through the... Uh, the dormitories and things like that. We're slowly getting there, but uh, it's taken us two years to finally just say, look, we're going to spend some money and get it done. Uh, I've challenged the wing uh, training uh, folks to come on and, and provide these things. There's two courses on the uh, CCF degree that it seems like people are, are, lack, are missing or not having the opportunity. One was the uh, uh, public speaking course. Uh, Elms College can provide that, and they were setting that up for about two months ago. But uh, the, the way there's an AFI requirement, we have to get make sure they're, uh, they're creditable, that uh, it counts. I don't want to waste your time. I want to provide the not only classroom, the books, and I want to sign you up and get that done. We were talking about doing that for the UTAs itself. We'll talk with Nichols to see if they can do something Monday through Friday. But uh, my goal is not just to do it for the folks Monday through Friday, but there's a goal to bring them in on a Friday and Saturday night of UTAs. Uh, and we'll provide classroom, we'll provide all, all the things that you need to do for the CCAF degree. And Elm College is willing to come in and do that for us over a period of about four months, uh, Fridays and Saturday, and that will get you the credit and then you'll get your CCAF degree. You're going to make mistakes, that's okay. Uh, it's how you recover from your mistakes. Uh, whether it be the pop-up barriers, whether it's where you're supposed to stand, what you're going to say. It does, you know, that's okay. Uh, that's what we're here for. We're going to train, and we train to a standard. If you make mistakes, we'll fix that. We'll carry, you know, decertify you. If we have to, we'll bring you back up to speed. So uh, don't worry about that. It's the folks that are out there, and I don't think we have that, and don't get me wrong, I'm crazy enough to think that everybody's doing everything 100%. There's a difference between a mistake and a crime, and the, the folks at Homestead are a perfect example of the crime. They will be held accountable, and they use the UCMJ, and those are issues that'll. Uh, that we won't have to go through here. We've had problems here, but uh, overall things are going pretty well. Uh, if they're not going well in your shop, uh, bring that word up. You know, talk to your supervision. There's a lot of people you can talk to.